Hey everybody, welcome. I haven't done a live for a while. Chef AJ here. I know it's not Wednesday. I don't mean to confuse you. It's actually Monday, but my friend Pam is visiting me and she mentioned how she saw some of my food photos on Instagram and she loved this dish that I've been eating a lot for dinner. I call it Kristen Bummer Delight because I don't know what else to call it because my friend Kristen Bummer made it for me. All I did differently was add potatoes to it, which you can't mess up any recipe by adding potatoes, you only improve it. And it, it's lunchtime, so she wanted to see how to make it, so I figured I'd show you guys how to make it. I call it Kristen Bummer Delight. And if you wanna know who Kristen Bummer is, go to Beans Not Bambi. And you can also go to my YouTube page and just put in Meet the Bummers, and she has a great story along with her plant-based OBGYN husband, Dr. Michael Bummer, and they live in Pittsburgh. So what I wanna start first is just to show you how to caramelize onions without using oil. I get asked that a lot, and I could have sworn I've done some videos or on my 13 episodes of my television show, Healthy Living, showed you how to do that, but if I didn't, I'll show you again. You know, my first book on process actually has a great recipe for caramelizing onions in the oven without oil. So the truth is, is the way you caramelize without onions, the way you cook, I mean, not without onions, you can't caramelize onions without onions, but the way you uh, saute or caramelize onions without oil is simply don't use oil, and I'm not being facetious, but there's nothing magical about oil. It's deleterious to your health. It's atherogenic, obesogenic, uh, diabetogenic. It's 4,000 calories per pound. It injures your endothelial cells. You just need liquid, or you don't need liquid at all. So what I've done is I've heated my pan, and I use high heat because I'm in a hurry, I'm hungry, and I want it to be as quick as possible. If you have another technique that works better, please do it. I'm just showing you how I do it. I do not worry about my pan. Get the best pan you can afford. If you can afford the waterless cookware, get that, or good piece of stainless steel. A lot of people use the scan pan. I think Mary McDougal likes that one. Shada uses the copper chef. This is a pampered chef, hard and a Nika, and a, a, can't say that word. But I've had this for 30 years, and want to get a close-up pan. This is in great condition. Even if it is Teflon, I'm not worried. I don't have a bird. It's never chipped or peeled. I take good care of it. So how do you know it's ready? Well, you just take a drop of water, and then you know it's ready. So I've cut up two large sweet onions in advance. I like to buy that big bag at Costco and you can just hear it sizzle. And you notice my onions are kind of the same size. They're actually pretty much the same size. And the reason is, is because I like to use this to chop up all my vegetables, the Vidalia Chop Wizard. This is $25 at Bed Bath & Beyond with the coupon. It comes down to below 20. This is the larger grate. It has a smaller grate. It is so easy. I have a really bad right hand and like things are hard for me. So this was very easy. So you can hopefully hear it, but I just kind of move it along in the pan and this video is going to be done in real time. If you have any questions, please ask. What kind of sweet onions? So um, these are not the Vidalia, which I love. These were just called sweet onions at Costco. If you can get the Vidalia, that's fine. If you prefer to use a yellow onion or a red onion, I love red onions in terms of flavor, but man, they're strong and they always make me cry. So you can see this is gonna brown really, really fast. It doesn't need oil. It almost doesn't even need any water. I may add a drop or two later if you prefer to use no sodium vegetable broth. I showed you a few weeks ago a great, episode, uh, great recipe from JL Fields to do that. So uh, if I had a cover, I could put it over. I could sweat them. So right now what I'm doing is called dry saute because there's absolutely no liquid or water in the pan. So I just want to spread it out and you'll see how quickly it will become caramelized. I also cut an equal amount of zucchini. This is about two pounds of zucchini. I don't know how much the onion weighed, I didn't weigh it, I just know because the bag said two pounds of zucchini, I'm using the green, and I pretty much cut it to the same size of the onion. If you like it smaller, cut it smaller. And what we're gonna do, so Kristen Bummer made this for me, it was so delicious, and she served it over quinoa, and it's a delicious as a standalone vegetable side dish. What I like to do is I like to add cubed russet potatoes to this as a, as a dish, and my husband did that as a hash with ketchup. But today, we are gonna serve it over the Hanna Yam. So Pam, come over here. One of the reasons I like the Breville uh, air fryer so much is because it's also an oven. It's almost 100 where I live today, so I was able to roast all these yams without heating up my entire apartment and not having to use the air conditioner. So I don't know how long this takes because I've never timed it. I mean, hopefully it won't take more than you know five or 10 minutes, but every now and then you, you just stir it around. You can see that the onions give up liquid 
and so you really almost don't even need to add any water or liquid to the end. We got anybody watching? And do yes. they have any questions? This is Pam's first time, so <laughs> Pam is, is that also... a Scooby on your stove top? Yes. Uh, you betcha. Uh, as a matter of fact, if anybody is in the museum business, uh, one of the reasons Pam is here is she's helping me archive a 30-year Scooby collection with probably over 2,000 pieces. I'm going for the Guinness Book of World Records, but it's time for me to donate the collection. I'm contacting several museums, so I don't want to split the collection up. I'm not charging for it, but I don't want the person to sell it. So if you know anybody that would like a very extensive collection of Scooby-Doo memorabilia, they can have everything but my tattoo. I'm not taking that off. How long did the sweet potatoes take in the... So I, these were very large sweet potatoes. I always try to buy sweet potatoes that are at least two pounds each because otherwise it's a mere snack. And so I roasted them in the Breville for 90 minutes at 450. That is what perfectly works for me for roasting. You know, you can always add time if it's not done. So if you want to just, just do it at a lower temperature or at a, uh, you know, a lower time. It, it takes the same amount of time in the oven, but the problem is, is the oven will heat up my entire house, apartment, and also it takes probably 20 minutes for my oven to preheat, whereas the Breville preheats in about three minutes. So you just keep moving these around. I mean, it's not rocket science, and you know, you can always buy onions pre-cut if you like. I mean, a lot of people think they lose their flavor, but depending on what you're doing with them, they have uh, club stores here where you can get 20 pound bags of cut onions. So I'll often do that and I'll freeze them, especially for Instant Pot recipes. But we're gonna be eating this, so um, we're gonna go with fresh. And using this tool, the Dahlia Chop Wizard, it was so easy to chop these onions quickly as well as the zucchini. Now, you can put other seasonings in. We're not gonna really use any seasonings. Pam and I are in the UWL program. We're basically SOS free, not basically we are. But if you wanted to add garlic or something like that, fresh garlic, I'm just trying to copy what Kristen Bummer did to the best of my knowledge. It never comes out as good as when she made it, but it's still pretty good. At the end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot it with a little bit of reduced balsamic. My favorite brand is Bima and Paz. Today we're going to be using the garlic cilantro infused. The smoke infused is also great on this. I like to transfer it to the squeeze bottle just because I like to just make things look pretty and I get a much better uh, ability to plate my food if we do that. So again, as long as you know it's moving around and not sticking, we don't need to add water. If it starts to stick, then we add water. When I say add water, we're talking like a tablespoon, if that. And what I'm doing here in a pan, you can do in your Instant Pot. I think I've showed you in some of my webinars that you can absolutely saute in the Instant Pot. There's a saute function. You don't ever need oil to cook, guys. You car, oil is for cars, it's not for people. So, How many times a day do you eat vegetables? Oh, I eat vegetables. Every time I eat, I eat vegetables. So, however, I eat between two and three times a day. I don't really call them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I just call them, I guess, meal one, meal two, meal three, or meal one, you know, maybe meal two snack kind of thing. I, I do what's called sequencing, what Dr. Ellen Goldhammer taught me at the True North Health Center, where I eat foods in order of increasing caloric density. I do this both for meal satisfaction because you don't enjoy foods of a lower caloric density like vegetables once you ingested foods of a higher caloric density, and that has to do with how much dopamine is released. But that way I know I'm getting enough vegetables. So whenever I eat, I eat vegetables first. So, so far today I've had a pound of purple carrots raw and a pound of cherry tomatoes. And the reason is, is because I always start my day with at least two pounds of non-starchy vegetables. And since I knew I was having the zucchini dish for lunch, I didn't have my usual two pounds of air fried zucchini. But anytime I eat, I always eat my vegetables first. Maybe I'll have it in the form of a salad or just some steamed vegetables. Ideally, if you're struggling with food addiction or if you are trying to lose weight, sequencing helps. And by that, we mean starting every meal with a huge raw salad, about a pound. And can you see how, how it's getting darker now? And that's about 100 calories, followed by another generous serving of steamed vegetables, preferably greens. That's about another 100 calories before moving on to the more calorically dense fruit, grains, uh, uh, starches, you know, the legumes, the potatoes. So this looks amazing. I wish there was smell-o-vision so you could see how quickly um, this is actually not taking long. And I know some people say, oh, you shouldn't use high heat. Well, I don't know. You know, I'm not worried about the minutia that so many of you worry about, about, you know, having a Brazil nut a day or micronutrient absorption because of the fat. Um, I have spoken now 
in so many medical conferences, the Childhood Obesity Conference, I've spoken at medical schools in Kaiser Permanente several times, it's up to 300 doctors, and I said to them, how many patients do you have that are in the hospital from not putting fat in their salad dressing because they couldn't absorb the greens? Nobody ever raised their hand, you know? So we need to get the big picture right and eat the right food and not worry about all this reductionist stuff. Just eat the food, like Dr. McDougal says, it's the food. Now, it is starting to get a little bit brown here, so I will take just a little bit of water, or if you want to use broth, and then I can add it, and this is what's really going to get it brown and caramelized. And, you know, you can do a big batch like I'm doing. I mean, because Pam's here, this is probably, this will feed both of us. Um, well, at least it'll feed me. I don't know how much she eats. She's a little thing. But definitely half of this will feed me, and if there's leftover, I'll just eat it another time. It's great over rice over quinoa as a standalone dish. But as it's starting to now, you know, I can hear, I can hear that it's almost starting to stick and that's when I will add my little bit of water and get all those little brown yummy bits and pieces. And if you ever made my Chipotle bean burgers, which is one of my best recipes, you can get it, I believe it's episode 106, 106 of Healthy Living with Chef AJ, or you can get it in my new book, which I hope you'll get. And if you get it, I hope you'll enjoy it. There's nothing like having caramelized onions on a burger. Now you guys can go as, as quick or as, I mean this could be done to some people, but I just want to show you, you can just keep going and keep going and get these so brown and they'll look like they did with oil. If I was going to add garlic to the dish, I wouldn't do it until me, my onions, me onions, I'm, I'm a pirate, until me onions are, were completely done because garlic does tend to burn, especially because I'm using high heat. And question is, do you eat avocados? No, ma'am. I or maybe ma'am could be a guy asking. I have nothing against avocados. If I were to ever reintroduce whole food fats to my diet, I would eat avocados probably first because in terms of caloric density, they're about 750 calories per pound. But I do not eat any overt fats. I haven't since January 2nd, 2012. If you want to know why, please consider going to my YouTube page and watching my story from Fat Vegan to Skinny Bitch, and it will tell you my whole history with being a obese vegan for over, um, well, for, 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 you know, the first 52 years of my life. So this is getting pretty good. almost have to turn the fan on. So I'm going to add the zucchini now. I mean, I would like to go a little bit more brown because I just like these things like all... How do you like them, Pam? You want them browner, or is this good enough for you? That's great. It the smells is delicious. So I have this beautiful spoon holder that I actually made. I fused it myself out of glass. And now I'm going to add my beautiful organic chopped zucchini to the onions. And I'm just going to put it on top. And you know what you can do? I'm going to show you if you want to make it a little bit faster. You could put a top on like this, <laughs> and I'll do that. If you, so we'll let that sit if you want to just come up and I'll say hello, hello. So do you guys have any questions for me? I could go into more detail about the avocado if you want. I think uh, I've talked about it quite in quite a few interviews and podcasts. Let me tell you what's going on, guys. So we have the Live Ultimate Weight Loss Conference in six weeks, Labor Day. We have a few tickets left. But guess what? If you can't come, we are offering a live stream for $100 off, only $97. I'll put a link in this broadcast. It's already on my Facebook page where you're watching this. And you can watch all the entire conference, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, for $97. And you have more than six months to view these as many times as you want. It expires March 22nd, 2019. I picked that day because it's my birthday. And it'll give you more than six months to watch it. And it's, it's, it's an amazing conference, so consider doing that. Anything else? Just sit here and look tan. Oh, well, everybody's complimenting how yeah. great it smells. Yeah, it's, it or looks it probably amazing. smells good. So, so while while we're doing that, we're gonna just take um, we're gonna take one of the potatoes out of the Breville Smart Oven. It really is a smart oven. And do you have a choice? Do you want a big one or a little one? I mean, a little one. Okay, because she's little. So They're she, all big. See, the funny thing is, is I always say, give me the biggest one you have. So this is still warm, and uh, so I'm not going to cut it right now because I don't. I want to keep it warm for when Pam enjoys it. So again, it's just you know even on high heat, this is uh, this is the way it is. So every now and then I'm going to lift the lid up, and I'm going to stir it. And I don't have to worry now about adding water, you guys, because zucchini is such a high water 
Well, I was going to say vegetable, but I don't know if you know this. Technically, zucchini is a fruit. There are six things that we classify as non-starchy vegetables. Zucchini, okra, eggplant, uh, tomato, bell pepper, and cucumber. Because they have seeds, they're botanically fruit, but they're about 67 calories per pound. They're even lower in caloric density than other vegetables. Now, how much you cook this is going to be depending on how El Dante you like the zucchini. But it's incredible. I wish I wish Kristen Bummer was watching live to thank her for such an ingenious, delicious um, uh, dish. So, um, what I want to say is, if you're trying to avoid salt, the way you do that is to use some kind of savory. If you use enough onion and garlic, or e e e today I'm not using garlic, either one or both, anything from the, al is it called the alum, allium family? You know, scallions, shallots, these are the things that a lot of the doctors tell us to eat every day, have some onions. These provide so much flavor. Eating a sofa-free diet, which is what I call it, sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, and salt-free diet, doesn't have to be devoid of flavor. I mean, my food's delicious. I cook for celebrities. I have, like, all the luminaries come to my house for dinner. I've had Dr. Campbell, and I've had Dr. Furman here, and uh, I've had Dr. Esselstyn here. My food's really, I'm not bragging, my food's really good. Even without that, I haven't used sugar, oil, and salt for, gosh, more than 10 years now. So, uh, you know, give it a try. There's always these delicious salt-free seasonings. This is my favorite. This is going to be represented at our Vegas conference. She's got some new flavors, by the way, that I've been testing for her that'll knock your socks off. But right now, this one is my favorite, Table Tasty. It does taste like salt. It's just herbs, really, really good. Debbie Benson developed it for her mother who had heart disease. She has a whole line. And again, if you use my name, AJ, 10% off, just like it be Mon Paz, you use my full name, Chef AJ, and then 10% uh, off at bmonpause.com. So the thing is, it's like, you know, it's hurry up and wait. And what is your go-to starch? My go-to starch is sweet potatoes because it's my favorite. Uh, it's the lowest in caloric density, about 350 calories per pound, but it's the most satisfying to me. And I, I go back and forth between the Hannah Yam and the Japanese sweet potatoes, depending on the availability. Uh, those are my two favorite. I could live on them. The Okinawans basically live on, on sweet potatoes. I think something like 69% of their calories comes from them. That's my favorite. Uh, so I, I fluctuate, but I, I eat all the sweet potatoes. I, I like the purple stokes, not quite as much that I, I like the Hawaiian ones. I like the Murasaki. I'm not crazy about the orange ones, the, the traditional garnet yam, unless I'm making fries, but they're great for like my pudding recipes and, and, and dessert types things. I also like white potatoes. I love Yukon Golds for mashed potatoes. I love russet potatoes for fries, but I find that I gravitate more towards the sweet potatoes because they're just satisfying and sweet and delicious. I also love the winter squashes, which is a category that a lot of people don't eat. Very healthy, butternut, hubbard, acorn, kabocha, delicata. Kabocha is my absolute favorite. I think the best recipe in my new book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, is the creamy curried kabocha squash soup. That's a recipe I made in Dallas uh, when I was with Gustavo, Dr. Gustavo Tolosa, who does my webinars. And Dr. Doug Lyle came for dinner, and he's pretty picky. And so is Goldhammer. And the fact that they both love this soup led me to believe it's a good recipe. So I, it gets really hot in here just with this, even just with this oven on. So uh, do you typically bake or roast your sweet potatoes? I roast. Roasting is at higher temperatures. Baking is baking is usually done at about 350. I've seen some baking recipes at 325. Never seen baking done at higher than 375. Roasting is at high temperatures, typically 400 to 475. So anytime you roast anything, whether it's a potato, whether it's vegetables, it's just gonna taste better because it caramelizes those natural sugars. And so for people that absolutely hate vegetables, Roasting them brings out the natural sweetness. So even things like Brussels sprouts that I never used to like, when you roast them, even plain without anything, they, they taste like candy. So let's see how this is doing. How El Dante do you like this? Now, I mean, if you ate pasta, wouldn't this be amazing mm. with a little bit of marinara sauce? And you know what? You know, you kind of have to look, but if you think it's sticking, you know, just add a little water because the truth is, it's gonna cook off anyway, or, or no, no sodium vegetable broth, but it's so delicious. We're almost done. I like it a little bit al dente. And again, if Pam weren't so hungry from working so hard, I would have caramelized the onion maybe five more minutes and get it really, really, really brown. So we're just gonna put that like that there. So is there anything else I can show people that might be interesting? Not really. 
Somebody did ask, where can I get Table Tasty? Yes. I missed that. You get Table Tasty at Benson's Gourmet Seasonings.com, and I will provide some links. So I'm getting ready to plate this up for, for Pam's lunch. And so I'm just going to take this deliciously, perfectly roasted sweet potato. I'm going to cut it in half, and I'm just going to push it. Now, she's probably going to need a little bit more vegetables that I'm going to put in just to have a, a good ratio, but since I just want to show you the plating. And again, any potato you want to use is fine. And then I'm going to turn my oven off now, and then I'm going to get a nice, big, hearty scoop and put it in here for her. Look at that. Oh, OMG. And Pam, do you like vinegar? Uh, or not? No vinegar. No vinegar. Me. Okay. No, thank you. All right. Well, if she liked vinegar, I can I can show you how I'm going to do you mine. You can put a little bit on her if you want. Well, I don't, I don't want to ruin yours, so I'm going to okay. give this out. I'm going to make another one for myself. That's okay, because I do love to have a balsamic glaze on mine. So I'm going to pick a bigger sweet potato, because I'm bigger than her, and I'm kind of a piggy. So here we go. I, just, I don't want the Japanese. I want the uh, Hannah for this one. Japanese would probably be good, too, though. And again, always batch cook. Always make sure that healthy food is the default. Always yeah. have it in your fridge. So I'm just gonna open mine. You can see it's still steaming hot. And I am just going to, oh, look at how dark that onion's getting. So good. So I'm just gonna put some scoops on top. Oh boy. If, you had, if we had some fresh herbs, like fresh parsley, probably be good. I'm having four scoops. Pam only had two scoops. There we go. It's like the Raisin Bran commercial. Whoops. And so then I take my balsamic. I'm just going to keep that covered. And I just like to look at that, guys. Oh, man. So a little more. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please contact me through my website, eatonprocess.com. If there's any special videos you want to see. I'm not doing too many Weight Loss Wednesdays live, but I still always put one episode up on YouTube every single Wednesday from my new book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, which you can get on Amazon, soon to be released on Kindle and Audible. And most every week, Tuesday or Wednesday, I do a show right here live called Healthy Living Live, where I interview interesting people. So I hope you'll try Kristen Bummer Delight. Thanks so much for watching. And as Julia Child said, bon appetit.